So recently I've been on the search for different solutions to the Basel problem. So in other words, finding the closed form for the sum of the reciprocal of the squares. So I've posted a couple of videos on this in the past, but finally I think I found maybe the most elementary solution to this problem. And it's not due to me. In fact, it comes from a paper by D. Danners from Math Magazine, and it's called A Short Elementary Proof That the sum of the reciprocals of the squares is pi squared over six. So how are we going to approach this? Well, first we're going to define two objects which are integrals. The first we'll call a sub n, the second we'll call b sub n. This is going to be the integral from zero to pi over two of cosine to the two n. And then this one is x squared times cosine to the two n integrated over the same interval. Then next up, we're going to prove three preparatory results. So the first one is a bit of a recursion on the sequence a sub n. The second one provides us some sort of relationship between the sequence a sub n and b sub n. So it's a recursion involving both of them. And finally, the third tool that we'll prove is about the limit of the ratio of these sequences. Okay, so let's jump into this first tool. So I've written a sub n over here so that we can immediately get started. And we're going to approach this using integration by parts. And in order to do that, I need to split this into pieces. So I'll split this while I still have the integral from 0 to 2 pi. And then I'll have the cosine of x times the cosine to the 2n minus 1 power of x dx. And like I said, we're going to do integration by parts. I can't really integrate this cosine to the 2n minus 1 power. That uh, would be a lot of work. So I'll set this equal to my u term. And then that means this cosine of x dx will be my dv term. So that means my du term will be equal to minus 2n minus 1 cosine to the 2n minus 2x times sine of x dx. So that's using the chain rule along with the derivative of cosine as minus sine. Next, if v is cosine of x dx, then that means v, so sorry, if dv is cosine of x dx, that means v is sine of x. Okay, so let's maybe box that so it's a bit out of the way. And that means that we can replace with this with u times v. So that'll be sine of x times cosine of 2n minus 1x evaluated from 0 to pi over 2 minus the integral of v du. So notice the minus sign cancels and we're left with plus 2n minus 1 and then the integral from 0 to 2 to pi over 2 of, like I said, v du. So it's the product of these two. So that'll leave us with sine squared x times the cosine to the 2n minus 2 power of x dx. Now, we'll notice that evaluating sine at 0 gives us 0, cosine at pi over 2 gives us 0, so this entire thing moves off towards 0. And then next up, we can take this sine squared and rewrite it as 1 minus cosine squared, and that leaves us with 2n minus 1 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the integral of cosine to the 2n minus 2x dx, and then minus the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the cosine of, to the 2n of x dx. But let's notice that by our definition of a sub n, this is exactly a sub n minus 1. This is exactly a sub n. So we've built this equation that a sub n is equal to 2n minus 1 times a n minus 1 minus a n, but that can be easily rearranged to give us this recursion right here, which reads 2n a n is 2n minus 1 a n minus 1. 
And now we're gonna move into our next tool, which is this recursion relating a sub n and b sub n. So I've started with a sub n one more time, and we're gonna, in fact, use integration by parts again. So here I'll let u equal this entire thing, cosine to the two n, and then dv will just be my dx term. So that means du is equal to minus 2n times cosine to the 2n minus 1 of x times sine of x dx, and then v will just be equal to x. Okay, good. So that's all of the parts that I need in order to perform this integration by parts. So again, I'll have u times v, but then evaluated at zero and pi over two, those will cancel out. So that really just leaves me with the integral of v du. So the minus signs cancel just like they did before. And then I have the integral from zero to pi over two again of x times sine of x times cosine to the 2n minus 1 of x dx. Okay, that's good. And now we're going to do integration by parts again. So now we'll take dv to be this x dx term, and then we'll take u to be all of this stuff that's in the middle. So with this choice for u, we've got to calculate du carefully using the product rule and the chain rule. So taking the derivative of sine first for the product rule will give us cosine to the 2n x, and then taking the derivative of cosine to the 2n minus 1 using the chain rule will give us minus 2n minus 1 sine squared of x, cosine to the 2n minus 2 of x, and then this is all dx. Okay, so again, that was carefully done with the product rule and the chain rule. So next up, we'll take this sine squared and rewrite it as 1 minus cosine squared of x, just for simplification. So let's see, that's going to leave us with cosine to the 2n x, that's from this term right here, minus 2n minus 1, and then we'll have cosine to the 2n minus 2x minus cosine to the 2n x, and then this is all dx. And when we start to simplify this, we see that things start to come together. So let's see, we've got one copy of cosine to the 2n power here. And then we are in fact adding 2n minus one copies of the same thing. So that'll leave us with, let's see, 2n copies of cosine to the 2n x when all is said and done. And then we're subtracting 2n minus one copies of cosine to the 2n minus 2x. And then this is all dx. Okay, so that, I think that's a nice simplification of du. Then if dv is x dx, that means that v is equal to half x squared, just by simple power rule integration. Okay, so now let's plug that in up here, keeping in mind that our u times v evaluated between zero and pi over two will still cancel. Okay, so we have two n times the integral of v du. But notice this half will cancel that two, leaving us with just n times the integral from zero to pi over two of, let's see, we have two times n times x squared times cosine to the two n x from this term right here and then minus 2n minus 1 times x squared times cosine to the 2n minus 2x dx. Okay, so that's good. So let's maybe partition this off so it's not really in the way. Now here we've got a multiple of b sub n just based off of our definition of b sub n here. And here is a multiple of b sub n minus one. <clears throat> and before we forget, there's a minus sign built into this from the integration by parts formula. So this is gonna be minus two n squared times b sub n. So that's from this guy right here and then plus 2n minus 1 times n times b sub n minus 1, and that's going to be from that one right there. 
But now reading that from the extreme left hand side to the extreme right hand side, we see that we have achieved our recursion that relates B sub n and A sub n, which is described right here. So we have a sub n is 2n minus 1 times n times b sub n minus 1 minus 2n squared times b sub n. Okay, so for our final tool, we'll calculate the following limit. And that's the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n over a sub n is in fact equal to 0. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. So here we're gonna start with our b sub n definition. So that's the integral from zero to pi over two of x squared times cosine to the two n x dx. Great, and now we're gonna use an inequality and I'm gonna say that this is less than or equal to pi squared over four times the integral from zero to pi over two of sine squared x times cosine to the 2nx dx. And this inequality may seem like it comes out of nowhere. And this is because sine of x is always bigger than or equal to 2 over pi times x when x is on the interval from 0 to pi over 2. So you can easily visualize this just by looking at these two as curves. So the sine function, well, it has this kind of nice shape. And then here's pi over 2. And 2 over pi times x is just the line that connects the origin to that peak right there. So if you're comparing this line that connects the origin to the peak, that clearly lives below the sine function, the curve. Okay, so that's a nice description of this inequality that we used to do that step. Okay, so that's good. Now we're gonna expand this sine squared into one minus cosine squared of x. And that allows us to take this pi squared over four and multiply it into, let's see, that's gonna turn into the integral from zero to pi over two of cosine to the two n, which is a n, minus the integral of cosine to the two n plus two, that's gonna be a n plus one. So something like that. But then next, this recursion over here, 2n a n minus 2n minus 1 a n minus 1 can be rewritten just a little bit so that it involves this a n minus a n minus 1 and you get the following. This is equal to pi squared over 4 times a n over 2 times n plus 1. So again, that's just like a little bit of algebraic manipulation. Okay, so now we have everything in place to calculate this limit. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n over a sub n is less than or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of pi squared over 4 times 1 over 2 times n plus 1. Just replacing this b sub n with this guy right here and letting the a sub n cancel. But this limit is clearly equal to 0. But we know that each of these terms are bigger than or equal to 0. So in the end, we have used the squeeze theorem to prove that our limit is in fact 0 by bounding it between two things that limit to 0. Okay, so that's this third tool. Now we're ready to finally finish this thing off. So I've got my sum prepped up here. So I'll take the sum of the reciprocal of the squares and rewrite it as the limit of the partial sum. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of our sum as n goes from one to capital N of one over n squared. But next up, we'll take this object right here and multiply it by one over n squared times a n. Notice that's gonna leave us with an n squared on the left hand side and then something to work with on the right hand side. So let's see what we get. So we'll have the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the sum as N goes from one to capital N of, so like I said, multiplying this by one over N squared times AN will leave us with 
2n minus 1 times bn minus 1 over n times a n for this first term. And then for the second term, we'll have 2 times bn over a n. So something like that. Okay, so next up we're going to apply this first recursion to replace this a n in our first term with an a n minus 1. That's going to allow us to rewrite this first term as, let's see, we'll have 2 b n minus 1 over a n minus 1. Again, using our first rule up here. Then I can pull a 2 out of both of these terms, and that leaves us with 2 times this limit is capital N goes to infinity. The sum is N goes from 1 to capital N of, let's see, we have B sub N minus 1 over A sub N minus 1 minus B sub N over A sub N. And now we have a classic telescoping series. So notice everything will cancel except for the first term from the n equals 1 place and the last term from the n equals capital N spot. So let's see, that's going to leave us with 2 and then we'll have b sub 0 over a sub 0 and then minus the limit as capital N goes to infinity of B sub capital N over A sub capital N. Again, because of the telescoping procedure. So we just finished proving that this thing is equal to zero, meaning that our final value will in fact be equal to this. But let's go ahead and finish it off by calculating that. So this is where we left ourselves off. Our goal sum was equal to two times B zero over A zero. Okay, so let's get to calculating that. So that's going to be 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of x squared dx over the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of just dx. Again, that's from plugging in n, n equals 0 into both of these. So this denominator is very clearly equal to pi over 2, and then this numerator will be x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 and pi over 2. So in the end, that's going to give us 2 times pi cubed over 8 times 1 third all over pi over 2. But let's see, in the end, this pi will cancel this pi cubed down to a pi squared. This 2 flips up and we have 4 pi squared over 24, which is exactly pi squared over 6, which is where we wanted to end up. And that's a good place to stop.